What up, players? It's War Boss Tay up in this mode. <laughs> That's right, we're gonna finish our Chaos Plague Marine of the Death Guard Legion of Chaos Space Marines, and uh, this is part of Project First Founding. We are working our way through all of the original First Founding Legions using their present color schemes and the 40k game range, and holy moly, we are gonna have fun. So the first, the colors we're gonna need are Death World Forest. I might miss some. And just, I'm warning you guys, I might miss some because I've been filming this over the entire day and we've just been jamming, having fun, laughing, living, working. Where's my Nurgling Green? I know that was next. Uh, there's Nurgling Green in there. So uh, you need Nurgling Green. I don't know where my, all my paints are. Uh, and then, and then we used, uh, we got into the pigments, I believe, or all the technical stuff. So. For the technical paints, I made use of everything. And the paints are Nurgle's Rot, which is all these gross boogers stuff. Argelin Earth, the cracked earth paint we used for different um, effects on the armor. We used Blood for the Blood God, for the blood. Nihilak Oxide for the oxidation stuffs. And no, there's another one. Here we go. Typhus corrosion. We use that for uh, to corrode up the armor, make it look really nasty. Finally, Rizza rust. Whoops. For all the rust effects. You also might notice that I added transfers to this guy to make him a member of the tactical squad of the 11th Great Company of Death Guard. And. Uh, Papa Nurgle thinks it's hilarious that he mutated everything about these guys except their original Legion markings to show that uh, he loves a good joke and that as, as horrible and gross and disgusting as these guys are, they used to be human. So I think he, he finds that funny and they used to be space marines. Um, other paints that we used to highlight for the gold, we highlighted that up with Rune Lord Brass. We also used a little bit of Rakarth Flesh for his horn at the tip there. And we used Bugman's Glow for the little maggots popping out of his chest. I believe that's it. If there was anything I missed, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, for his visor. For his visor, we used Mornfang Brown and XV88 to paint a kind of orangish orangish kind of look to the inside and finally we finished with Wild White Rider Red. Awesome looking conversion kits from from Forge World. If I could go back and order them again I would uh, get them or if I could build these guys again I would get, get them with the current Death Guard Chaos Space Marine shoulder pads. I wanted to try something different though since this is first founding and wanted to do something uh, kind of weird and grotesque and have them with their original imperial markings. So, had a great time painting him up. He's going to match the rest of his squad, like his sergeant here, and uh, they're going to go out and spread the good word of Papa Nurgle to all the imperial non-believers. Hope you guys enjoyed the, the video. Uh, don't forget to like and leave a comment below. And uh, sorry if this makes any of you sick out there. I'm, I'm going to go throw up now. And we'll see you in the next video. Alright, we're going to get started again, and we're going to start with painting up the armor, re-highlighting the armor, and that's going to be with Death World Forest first. So I'm going to start from the feet. Oh, look at this mold line. So I've been looking through the Forge World Imperial Armor 
or not Imperial Armor, what am, what am I talking about? The uh, Horus Heresy books, The Trail and Massacre, and wow, are they great for the fluff. I mean, for the rules too, if you want to play a game of 30k, but for the, just for the, ins oops, inspirational artwork, amazing. I hope that's not Jamaica calling again. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't know why Jamaica's calling me so much. They don't leave a voicemail. They just... Maybe they think I'm some kind of... Rastafarian... drug dealer, cartel guy or something. Oh boy, wouldn't that be exciting? Mild-mannered war boss Tay, mistaken for... big time... I read Drug Lord. I used to be a one time I read Drug Lord. Oh, shut up, Lewis. You were not. I used to smuggle the finest smack into and out of the Lower East Rockies. They used to call me El Jefe. Nobody called you El Jefe Lewis. I actually think those phone calls are for me, war boss. One of my old associates, Carlos Ruiz, said he'd be getting in touch with me. No, he didn't. About smuggling some dope into the area aboard my corpse cart. You're not smuggling drugs in your corpse, corpse cart, Lewis. Oh, shit. So you obviously don't want to get any paint on your Balthazar Gold parts, anything that we painted Balthazar Gold, the trim of your model. But the great thing about this section is that if you do, by accident, get anything onto the gold sections and don't worry it's not the end of the world because the gold is going to get a highlight as well Ooh, look at these little maggots coming out of the breastplate here yeah one of the things I love about Death World Forest over the over the uh, Nurgling Green is that it really gives you a disgusting kind of finish. Looks like a pea green almost. And I think that's great because it looks like it could genuinely be something that got painted or that, that kind of crusted up over over a dirty white after you know years and years and years man I've seen some fantastic stuff on cool mini or not it took me a long time to try to figure out how I wanted to do this tutorial for you guys uh, but in the end I think that this way is gonna be pretty good alright that brings me to this kinda ramble that I wanted to share with you guys when painting Nurgle figures in 40k or in fantasy I've found or in just in looking at different Nurgle figures you've got kind of two schools of thought out there you've got your clean quote unquote clean Nurgle which is kind of anything done by the Games Workshop studio the heavy metal studio and what I mean by clean is that the the washes are not overboard there's, there's transitions, there's highlights they don't go they don't really go crazy with with anything. And then you've got the more often seen dirty Nurgle. And that is when they just cover something with, you know, liquid green stuff and they create pusses and boils and 
they paint really sloppy and they overdo the, the shades and everything because uh, Nurgle is, after all, the god of plague and filth and decay and corruption. So a logical thing to do would be to paint your model as if it was basically decaying from the inside out. My personal school of thought is that while that is true, there's a fine balance you have to maintain when doing a Nurgle figure. Because if you overdo it, just like if you were to do a corn army and you decide because he's the blood god and he's all about blood that you just cover your figures with fake blood to the point where you can't, you don't even, it doesn't even make sense that you paint them any other color because everything gets covered up in Blood for the Blood God or uh, Tamiya Red, which is my other favorite blood formula. So for Nurgle, it's a, it's a fine balance, right? You want to find, I think that's what, what happened to me when I was painting my test model. I was going so much for that dirty Nurgle look that when I stepped back and I looked at the f figure after I did all the weathering and all of the Nurgly bits, I did all the slime and the, the rust and all the oozing decay and stuff. I, I looked at my model and I said, wow, this looks like something I would have painted when I was 12, 12 years old. Back when my orcs and goblins figures were basically just goblin green with giant red eyes that went over their eyeballs because I just painted the whole thing. It was gross. Okay, we're going to take Rackhart's flesh now and we're going to paint the little bone popping out of the head. And remember, if you're using a regular Chaos Space Marine helmet or, or something else, you might not have this. In fact, for the Space Marine helmets though, a lot of their helmets come with bones. So you can, you can follow this, this part too. I love how these Forge World bones have the little, little lines running down them. The detail. Fantastic. Alright, next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint in the stitches on the head. And we're going to do that with Abaddon Black. These faces for the Plague Bear kit have these stitches over the eyes and over the mouth. So you don't want to be too messy. That. There we go. Next, Drukai Violet. Give our light grenade a nice, disgusting little bruised look. I also do this for most of my zombies or undead figures. It gives your already unhealthy looking models a nice sickly purple pallor. Purple pallor. Purple pallor people eater. What? Okay. What are we doing next? Last highlight before we can get into the awesome weathering stuff is Nurgling Green. Now I'm going to try to do a... Somebody on my Facebook mentioned that he would like to see me doing a, a highlighting tutorial on how to do basic highlighting specifically on cloth. And I thought, that's a great idea. You've got two different schools of thought with highlighting, I find. Highlighting hard edges, or what we call edge highlighting. For example, these armor plates, right? They're hard pieces of material. So we're going to paint them like that. And soft highlights for things like cloth, cloaks, live things like uh, faces or things like horses. The highlights on those are a little bit different. When you're doing something like edge highlighting, what I like to try to do is, you can either do it two ways. Brace your hands like this when painting and then make sure that the figure is stable either by leaning it on the table or holding it as still as you can and then only getting the paint on the edge of your tip of your brush 
follow the line down. Also with things like armor, you'll find that hard edge highlighting is always really good on anywhere where there's a solid line that the, that the eye can follow. Like this plate on the backpack is a solid line. It follows this other plate underneath, it's a solid line. Something that curves, like the shoulder pad on the inside of the trim can also be painted, and I'll show you how to do that, but uh, to me I find that it's, I found that it's not as, not, not as uh, effective. So like where one material, the material that you're highlighting meets another material, and you just do like a little line of a highlight inside. Sorry about that, the uh, camera cut off. What I was saying was, this style doesn't really work with models such as, uh, with these kind of like nergly models where they're supposed to be all decayed and rusted and, and broken and corroded because what I did, unfortunately the camera missed it because uh, I'd reached my, my length was that I'm showing kind of how to, how to highlight a material so that it looks nice and sharp and clean. So, I show you how you um, just take a fine piece of uh, a fine fine paint on a fine edge of your edge of your brush and just brush it along. Oh, where did my? Oh, here we go. And uh, kind of paint in the area where the piece that you're highlighting, in this case the shoulder pad, meets the piece that you're transitioning to, or in this case, the gold. There's no right and wrong way to highlight, I think. You just wanna make sure that when you're doing it, you're, you're consistent and that the highlights don't bleed over into the area that's supposed to be the, the main color. So in this case, Death World Force is the main color of the armor, right? The Nurgling Green is the highlight. So when we're painting our highlight, we don't want it to paint too much of the Nurgling Green so that it it gets mixed up with the rest of the armor color. I painted it up here on the exhaust ports, the little pods, whatever those are called, and I painted it a little bit on the shoulder pads. And um, another good place to paint it is here on the back of the Marine, uh, or here the elbow pads, for example, but on the back of the Marine on their legs, where the leg armor goes into the joint, that's another fine place to put a line of your highlight color the bottom and here at the top both sides and here on the butt flaps now even though these are Nurgle models you might say oh well they're Nurgle so they don't need you don't need to highlight them because they're supposed to look all gross and disgusting anyway. That's true. You don't have to do these highlights. I found though that even with Nurgle models, my preferred approach is to be clean with all the details. Otherwise you end up with uh, something that just looks really sloppy. on the elbow pads. They've got a clear line down the center. If you even hold it up to a light source, you can see where that highlight is supposed to be. And the plates on the hands, very sharp edges. You can also highlight the fingers. Don't forget the fingers on the inside. Boom. And there you go, that's all the highlighting. So now what we're gonna do is, or that's all the highlighting for the armor, rather. The highlight, the only highlight for the gold is Rune Lord Brass. Rune Lord Brass is a fantastic color. It's 
It's like a dirty, dirty gold. It reminds me of the old color range when you would do like, I think the old equivalent of Balthazar gold was dwarf bronze, but you couldn't paint it right onto a model. The dwarf bronze ran so easily. So what you would have to do is paint the foundation color first, like Calton Brown or Camry Brown, and then you'd paint your Balthazar gold over it, or your, your dwarf bronze over it to create this the same effect as one coat of Balthazar gold on a current model. And then, if you're painting like an evil character or something where the, the gold would be dark or, or it was like brass, for example, in Orcs and Goblins model, it wouldn't have bright, shiny, new, new gold-looking equipment. What you would have to do is shade it down with the shade, like Devlin Mud, or the old Badab Black. Do, 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 do. So many steps. But with this new paint, or the new paint range, the, the most recent one, all you really need to do is paint a coat of Balthazar gold, then after you shade it, highlight it up with whatever appropriate gold highlight you want. If you want a nice new looking gold, you could use Gehenna's gold. If you want a really shiny armor of the elves kind of gold, then you could use Ulrich armor gold. For us, because we're using, or we're painting up this Nurgle Death Guard Marine, we are going to use Moon Lord Brass. See how that looks? That looks really, really cool. It almost looks like the gold gets toned down, washed out. Comes really dirty looking, industrial kind of color. I think that's why I like Rune Lord Brass also. It's kind of like the most realistic looking of the gold colors or the brass or the bronze or anything that's not silver. It's, I, th I think it's the most realistic looking shade. All right, so going really quickly to the backpack now, starting with the, the rims. And hitting this arrow. Oh man, so um, my lady boss and I, we're usually only ever home uh, together like later at night because of the different jobs we have. She teaches, I teach, and sometimes we don't get home till late. And so we've been hanging out and watching a lot of Netflix. And man, you can get through or you can really uh, lose a lot of time on that. Okay, I'm gonna use Abaddon Black. I forgot to paint this, these wires, these pipes. Anyways, yeah. Right now we're currently knee deep into season one of Twin Peaks. And I love it. Don't spoil it, don't spoil anything in the comments. I'm enjoying too much the show. Yeah, there's so much cool stuff on it, like X-Files and oh, so many old shows that I grew up with. All right, we're going to take Rakeland, or no, Seraphim Shepia. And by now the horn should be dry enough to paint. Okay, we're going to start with the all the technical paint stuff now. So... Uh, actually, the last thing we want to do is put on some transfers. So the way we're going to do that is I've, you can either use chaos transfers. Normally, you would use chaos transfers, but what I've decided to do is to actually use the um, original loyalist transfer sheet for the Death Guard. 
Just because I think it would be funny. I think Papa Nurgle would find that the most amusing to give his give these traders the uh, original iconography. So I've got this Forge World decal sheet here with all the Death Guard iconography and insignia on it. I am going to say that this guy is a, a tactical marine from the 11th Great Company. So what I did for the sergeant here was I put the 11 symbol on his shoulder pad and zoom in and check that out. And the tactical symbol. Oh, so shiny. And I think I might want to do the same kind of thing. We put cut out the ele uh, the ninth icon here. Look how small these decals are. Tactical marking. Oops. Oh darn it. I got cut off the top of that arrow. Okay, these these transfer sheets, kind of like the the Games Workshop ones, because these are from Forge World. They are um, the transfer paper is bigger than the design. Which means that when you get the design off of the paper and try to apply it to the model, uh, in many cases the design itself is, or the, the paper kind of folds over just because there's so much. So what I like to do now is try to cut off some of the excess. You have to be super careful with this. Make sure you're working with a, a good blade or uh, or something like that and make sure it's real tight. This blade is actually pretty old that I'm using on my X-Acto knife now, so I should probably not be showing this to you guys and setting a bad example. Safety first. Specifically with these arrows, or with the tactical symbols, or any kind of symbols. You'll see that um, when you try to get them off the paper, off the transfer paper, they are... The transfer paper is... Transfer paper is a little... Um, it, it overhangs, there's, there's too much, so like to cut off the excess, like so. Now we're gonna use Micro Arts Studio, or Micro Scale Industries, Micro Set and Micro Sol. First one we're gonna use is Micro Set. What Micro Set does is it allows your transfer to go onto the area and uh, be moved around. You can also use gloss varnish for this part if you want. Okay, and then I'm going to take my tactical arrow and I'm going to dip it into Lamian medium. Hopefully this will take off some of the shine. I got this as a tip from a viewer. So, so thank you guys. Continue to send in any modeling tips that you might have. I truly appreciate it. So you get it. You want to get it onto, oh, it looks like it hasn't absorbed yet. You dip your uh, your transfer into either water or, in this case, Lamian medium. Leave it in long enough to soak all the way through. Interesting. Interesting. I have to tell you guys, this is the first time I'm trying it like this, so it looks like you have to soak it in the medium a little bit longer. I've also heard somebody say, I was looking on the forums and somebody said you should dip it into matte varnish as well, but I figure since you are going to paint the matte varnish on right after, should be okay. Huh. It's taking a long time to absorb. Usually when you do it in water, it 
goes on like really really quick or it it seeps through really quick so that you can put it right onto the model which might be not the most effective way of doing it that's okay live and learn yeah the transfer should have been able to slide right off so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip it into my water now get my hairy hobbit hand and should have been long enough I wonder if the Lamian medium kind of sealed it somehow to the paper yeah, it shouldn't be I think if you dip it into water any kind of liquid the transfer paper is supposed to slide right off really easily so There we go. I'm going to pop it right back into the Lamian medium for just a second more. And then we're going to place it on the shoulder pad. What I've noticed is that Chaos shoulder pads are really good in that uh, they allow you to focus, uh, center, the center the transfers onto the piece because they've got this little point at the top. What the? Cloudy. It's all this now. What is all this? What? Ooh. Nurgly. No idea, but thank goodness this is a Nurgle Marine and not something else. Whoa, look at that. It's like melting right on it. I wonder if the micro arts studio or the I talk about micro arts the micro scale industries products the micro set and the micro saw is having a having a reaction to the to the Lamian medium so you should be able to get your transfer onto the shoulder plate shoulder pad and move it around with with micro set and then once the micro set, or once you're ready, what you do is you take micro saw, and that's the one in the red bottle, and you paint that on. And what that does is it's supposed to dissolve the transfer paper so that it's not as flat. A lot of people have rightly complained about these Space Marine transfers. You put them on, and then the flaps hang off like a straight piece of paper, even after it dries. So what Microset Sol does is that it, it folds the transfer so that it adheres to this circular shape. Hmm. Interesting. Not quite sure what to make of this cloudy white finish. So, I don't know. I'm dipping the X1 into the water now. Only need it in there for a little second, it gets completely drenched, and then you can slide it off the sheet. Again, we'll dip it into the Lamian medium for just a second. I'm going to place it right on the front of the shoulder pad to mark his grand company affiliation. I think most of these, most of the Nurgle gods would find, find it funny to use a Space Marine's original iconography rather than the current Chaos ones. I like to think so. I think it's because Space Marines are supposed to epitomize the uh, awesomeness of humanity, right? The the great potential that we can achieve as a race, and uh, the Chaos Gods coming in and mucking it all up is a great irony, I think. Hmm. 
Ooh, Nurgly. I wonder why it's doing this. All right, well, who knows? GW, why don't you like to play nice with other companies? This microset and microsol isn't from Chapter House. Why are you being so mean? Giving it a funny finish. As always, I mean, Death Guard fluff, really super interesting. Mortarian, the Primarch, landing on this world, Barbarous. Then having to fight his way up to the top. So yeah, I'm going through all of the old, um, or not old, but the the older Horus Heresy stuff right now, trying to catch up to the current books, and I'm having a great time reading it and doing book reviews when I can. Right now I'm actually in A Thousand Suns. I finished uh, the other ones, Tales of Treachery or or something like that, or Age of whatever the compilation story, short story book was. Finished that one, and I finished the one right after that, which was... Oh god, what was it? The one right before Thousand Suns. Oh yeah, Fallen Angels. Stupid. Stupid Fallen Angels. More on that later, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, it's got to be the Lamian, Lamian medium that's having a weird effect on the on the transfer. I just painted it on, and it is just going nuts. So, oops, dang, dang it, dang it. All right, I'm not gonna bother it anymore. Alright, we're going to let this all dry, and we're going to get on to the weathering. Oh, this part is going to be super fun. I, I definitely had a lot of fun with this. First thing I'm going to do is get out the Argolan Earth. 